How's it going? I feel this very important video, <coughs> certainly very important for me and very important uh, in my life or in, in what I'm seeing at the moment. And basically, in short, in politically correct terms, it's about getting out of the fucking head. So I'll give you a few examples that have happened, um, or a couple of examples. But over the last few years, more and more of my own guidance has just been to be in the body this is not popular at all <laughs> because people want fluffy things and they want lights and to see things and all that kind of stuff. So more and more being guided to be just be grounded. And when I work with people, that's often really what I'm pushing people towards. I, I, and I want to state as well and stress that this is my journey. This is my experience. I'm when I work individually with people, I tend to have guidance for them if what it's what feels right for them. But so people listening to this, if you're listening to this, the odds are you've some resonance with what I do or what I'm speaking about. You've been drawn to this video for some reason. So it may or may not be, but some people go off on different journeys that are unrelated to anything I do. So allow yourself that openness to explore elsewhere. You don't have to, to be the way I am. That's we give our power away to people all the time. Anyway, the simple way in a way to expand our consciousness or our experience and to have higher experiences is quite simple. It's so simple. I would encourage most people possibly <laughs> to close this video after I've said the next sentence. It's just get out of your head. That's it. That's all it is. I could actually end the video at that. When I was in AA, when I was getting sober years ago, there was a guy who would say, you know, the, the solution. And he'd hold a hand up in front of his face and he'd say, it's so simple, they can't see it. It's right in front of their eyes and people couldn't see it. And it's this, it's very similar or the same in this instance. It's just to be in the body. Ramta used to say that the body is a spaceship. We can go anywhere in the universe with the body by tuning in, by working with the body and what, what's within it and how it works, understanding this machine, understanding the rules, how to apply them. And fluffy modern spirituality, I'm going to copyright that. <clears throat> you know, things get out of your head. Go on wonderful imaginative journeys and all the rest and, and visit faraway places. They're fantastic, maybe even fantastical. But the way they may come about is by being in the body. We take the body, we use the body, and we work with the body. So when I teach, uh, you know, when I teach people on my course about meditation and self care, I tend to, I'm very careful with what, how people meditate. There's so many meditations out there. Uh, these days and guided meditations and there are benefits in them but we need to be pushing through we can't get comfortable with something it's like exercise in a gym if you do the same exercise all the time it's kind of pointless you need to to keep varying what you're doing so it's the same with meditation and ultimately for me in my work i'm steering myself and other people back to being present there's no need for a guided meditation or imagining you know, as Jung says, imagining beings of light, imagining fluffy clouds and wonderful things and being on a beach and hearing the water lapping and all that. Fantastic. It might help people sleep or relax or whatever. It's not what I do. So I do use guided meditations with people at times. And it's uh, the likes of Sarah Blondin, who I think is incredible, is to draw people into their pain, is to facilitate a release. It's very purposeful. It's being used for a specific purpose. But also there's training of just stillness, mindfulness. There's lots of fancy words for it these days. I don't know, it's Vipassana. There's loads of different, you know, trendy kind of movements of meditation, traveling around the world. But ultimately it's about being present, being in the body and observing whatever kind of emotion is traveling through us. So a couple of things. I've never read Osho before, but I'm reading a book called Tantra by him at the moment. And there's certainly, you know, there's a lot of, different sections in it and different pieces that are of interest so he does talk as well about the importance of the body and being in the body so i've had my own experiences that i've talked about of dragons and 
um you know seeing snakes and seeing all these different things all these things happen by being in my body by being present in my body by being present in my body i can observe what's going on and then i will be taken or i will see something else this is just my experience i'm sure other people it can happen to them differently but it's what i it seems it's a strong part of my message is to be connected and present to be aware of what's happening within us our higher self is sending us emotion you know there's one interpretation that we are here on this earth in this body to accumulate experience experiential emotion we're banking emotion we're locking in emotions that we get complete with into the soul and and we evolve so that's why you know the woman attracts the wife beater again and again and again until she evolves past that she has pain or suffering or whatever it is and triumph eventually to evolve past that so if we're not evolving past something often it's because we're not actually present with what is being presented to us we don't want to be because there's other things to do <laughs> there's netflix <laughs> there's fucking twitter and facebook and fast food and there's so many distractions part of the course to nurture whatever is being presented nurture the shadow so whatever darkness or anxiety or pain is being is we're being presented with is to embrace that and bring that home we've drawn that in so it's always very easy to kind of point the finger over there and say he's crazy she's crazy he's a psychopath she's a narcissist all this kind of stuff that's all just projection it's people who are, are unable to look at their own trauma and their own pain and another one to be harsh in my opinion is the term empath it's a brilliant word for people to disassociate from what is within them so for me very simply if i'm working with someone and i feel anger or i feel pain what the fuck is their energy or their pain doing in my being i'm god i'm spirit i'm a multi-dimensional being and for some reason this person's energy is within me i would say no and I, I'm open to being wrong I'd say that their energy is presenting to me a pocket of pain within me or pa pain or whatever it is within me that I was previously unaware that I now have an opportunity to integrate and make peace with using the term empath is a great way of drawing the line and say well that's them it's nothing to do with me I'm going to heal them <laughs> we'll come back to that anyway i've lost my train of thought so, which is not unusual so we'll carry on into the breach so yeah i've no idea what i was saying but i'm going to read a section from from osho so if we if we leave the body behind if we leave our being behind and the information that is being presented to us then we can imagine anything and this is this is what osho says about some of this stuff I talk about the inner light. Immediately after a few days, people start coming to me. They say, I have seen the inner light. They have found the roses in their other world. They don't exist there. Because of this metaphorical language, many people simply become imaginative. P.D. Ospensky coined a word he used to call it imaginazione. Whenever somebody came and he started talking about inner experiences, the Kundalini has arisen. I have seen a light in the head. Chakras are opening. He would stop him immediately and say, Imaginazione. So people would ask, What is this Imaginazione? He would say, The disease of imagination. And he would simply drop the matter. Immediately he would say, Stop, you have fallen victim. I've talked in the past about how empty we are. And I say we, if you exist. We're so empty that we look for anything to build us up and i made a video i don't know a few months back about you know my own emptiness attaching to the idea of being a healer or working with women or all these things and then realizing that no i don't want that to be my identity i'm far greater and expansive than any of these boxes that my ego wants to put me in so often as we have spiritual experiences we tend to attach to them and think that we feel better now i'm a master at this because I, I am and i have been so empty so insecure so lacking in my own spirit and my own heart you know 
there's a, a a lot of work I did with other people on the land on on sacred sites in Ireland and in the UK over the last couple of years. And in looking back, you know, the intensity I personally brought to some of these. And I didn't speak out loud and say, oh, we're saving the world. I don't think, maybe I did, I probably did actually. But, you know, certainly somewhere within me, consciously or subconsciously, I felt that this was very important. And I was clearing satanic energy from the land and paedophile energy and all sorts of, all sorts of heavy stuff. Maybe I was. It's also important for me to, to let go of that fucking self-importance, you know. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares what I'm doing? It, it doesn't really matter. It's my own journey of clearing whatever is presented within me. So all this stuff that I thought that I was kind of clearing from the land, maybe I was, but maybe I put it there. Maybe I'm responsible for all of it, and maybe it is me. And maybe, you know, if I hadn't gone around doing those things in the first place, I wouldn't have to be going around clearing it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a nicer way to maybe deflate my ego. I'm so spiritual. <laughs> I'm so spiritual. I was a satanic paedophile in so many lifetimes. Anyway, <laughs> I keep losing my train of thought, so I'm going to move on. Yeah, it's the, it's the, imagina the imagination of these things, and we can just latch onto them. In the spiritual world of like, my chakras were spinning, and I saw a gold, and I saw a blue, and I saw, I don't know if there is a gold chakra or a blue chakra, or I don't know. But I'll give you my experience from yesterday, and that might make more sense than I've made so far. So I went to a sacred site. I went to La Crue in Ireland. I've been there many times. And I took a woman I was I was working with that I met, and there was no plan. We didn't plan to go there. We She hopped in the car, and we thought, where are we go? And uh, I presented a few suggestions, and she said that felt right. So I knew anyway. If we're meant to be there, we'll be there, and if we're not, we're, we're not. So we drove to La Crue. This woman is quite in her head. She's read a, a lot of spirituality stuff. So I would say that a lot of the intellect or an overactive intellect is masculine energy. And especially for women, you're, you're aiming to get into your heart, into your body. Women flow love. They bring love to the world. They bring a groundedness. There's nothing wrong with intelligence or, or information. There's a brilliant quote that I can't find that uh, I'm going to, not sure what book it was in that I'm going to have to find on this but it, it's about intellect and intelligence complements our higher being and our intuition and what flows through us so we, we're not removing intellect and it's not bad or any of that but it is when it's fucking steering the ship because where's the spirit where's the intuition where's the flow or if we allow a little tiny bit of flow and we have all this information bubbling about in the mind it's it's pointless so I found that piece from a book. I now forget which book it's from. But <laughs> this is the piece anyway of relevance. The intellect is a vital tool as far as organising and utilising the earth plane for the practical necessity of everyday living, of course. But it can only discern facts, not truth. Facts are not truth itself, but rather the symptoms or outcome of truth. The good intellect was given to us to serve the higher intuition, to fight its cause and facilitate its vision, and ultimately to kneel in honour of and obedience to the heart-mind. When it will permit itself to do this, it can become brilliantly inspired and will reflect true intelligence. And so the intellect is revealed as the handmaiden or knight of the rightful ruler, the heart-mind. When the intellect seeks to claim the throne for itself, it is as if the handmaiden or knight overthrows the rightful king or queen, and eventual chaos is the result. In the age of, of Aquarius, where the mind is exalted and the intellect in receipt of a dynamic, expansive energy, it is essential to keep it firmly in its place as servant rather than master. When the intellect is allowed to overthrow the true vision of the mind of the heart, then the intellect, the lower mind, becomes self-destructive and endangers humanity's very existence, as well as the existence of our beloved planet. Here's a follow-up piece to that. The human body, intellect and soul working together as a unity is the finest instrument for receiving communion from the higher spheres. In order to do so, 
the body and the mind are quietened and calmed by gentle focused breathing. The mind descends softly into the heart and waits in stillness, ready to serve. It has to remain humble or the ego will assert itself. And on we go. So we're on this sacred site and I'm I'm repeatedly, gently, <laughs> politically correctly uh, suggesting to her to, you know, how do you feel or what's going on in the body? And she'll do it for a few seconds and she'll forget. And at times she'll have quotes from various books uh, or various sages and speakers and they're all interesting and they're all relevant but to be blunt I don't care because I want to know what's going on within as we walk around the site you know she had uh, you probably know what I'm talking about anyway the spiral you know that's on Celtic stones so it could be energy it could be a snake there's lots of theories of what it is and she had a necklace she had a dream about this spiral years ago and she found herself in Ireland she found this necklace and she bought the necklace with the spiral on it and now she finds herself at this site and I knew that there was these spirals carved into these stones in one of the cairns so I took her into that cairn and I pointed and she was shocked and she was amazed and she she looked at this and she talked a bit and I, and I talked her down and I guided her you know what's going on within and as I guided her into into her own body and into her own stomach and her solar plexus and her womb and that energy flowing she began to cry and we had never met before so I imagine she was to a degree uncomfortable you know to be crying with a stranger in a strange place and I just comforted her I held her and I had language I had light language that came through which really I felt her soften and really resonated with her she was familiar she knew the voice she knew the language she knew the being and my point is that all this happened because I managed to get her into her body so if we stood there talking and with quotes and he said she said in whatever book all that would be lost would be missed so we worked around the side a bit more and then we went for food and when we sat down for food I just felt moved to say when we get back in the car you're going to work on my heart and she laughed she didn't have a clue what I was talking about she had no interest and and dismissed it and thought I don't know I don't and and then her wonderful mind had suggestions of like I don't heal people we heal ourselves and all this stuff that's true it's very interesting but I have no interest in what's coming out of your mind (laughs) so we eat our food and we get back in the car and I suggest that she works on my heart. She doesn't want to because she, she has this wonderful information that she doesn't heal me. And I know she doesn't heal me. But there are other reasons. And let's not have a 20 minute debate about what the other reasons might be. Let's just get into the body and work. So in the end I had to grab her hand and put her hand on my chest and my heart. And again talk her down. She closed her eyes. I closed my eyes. And I had awareness then of past lives with this woman. And I could see them and I could feel them. I could feel the connection. We opened our eyes and she looked a little bit changed, a bit shocked that, okay, something actually had happened here. She had been party to something. So we went in again. I felt shifts and openness in my own heart, a vulnerability and an openness. Because why would my being choose to work with some stranger? My being will only work with someone that it trusts and have has worked with before and this is this woman who we had never met before you know a few hours before we had contact online but we hadn't met after that she was beaming smiling and i asked her you know what what happened and she said i sent you love and wisdom and joy and different things so i said you know did you intend these things or did they come through you and she said no they just flew flow through me so again it was another example of getting out of the head it was just a being present in the body and in the moment and following intuition following guidance and just after that i felt i had language i held her hand and i i spoke light language to her and again she just started to cry you know and she just felt grounded and that was that you know and it was a wonderful experience but it was all possible just by being present and following little bits of guidance you know in the restaurant to say you're going to work on my heart and to get in the car and say no let's just do it often our overactive masculine energy that energy just wants to wants to figure things out first 
if I can figure out what's going on here. Why is this happening? What's the message here? But we can go on for fucking ever with this. And for me, I'm, I'm, I think over time I'm becoming more impatient is the wrong word. But, you know, as I said to, hello, Rebecca, as I said to Rebecca, I think it was yesterday, you know, that I don't have time for this. Life is short and I feel like I'm getting old anyway. But in, in working with people or in recording these videos, I think where I have to move or where I am moving is urgency, is to kind of, as much as I can, as much as I'm capable, to cut the bullshit. I'm not doing anyone any service by allowing fluffiness. We can find God if we look, but ultimately, <laughs> get out of your fucking head, you know. It's, it's observe your core and make, build your relationship with your core. Give it time to see, it. like instantly you'll kind of think, I don't feel anything. Well, keep fucking doing it. Do it again and again and again, a hundred times a day. Keep doing it. Check in. Observe your stomach, your core, because you're going to feel anxiety. You're going to feel fear. You're going to feel peace. You're going to be grounded on earth. You came as some sort of being from some other place to this human body and human experience not to go off on fluffy rosy fucking journeys you know imagining beings of light as Jung says but to be in the human body to see what does this human body feel like what happens in it how, how does it age or not age if you conquer death and then to accumulate emotion those experiences that you bank into your soul and your spirit that you take with you so we can't bank anything. We can't evolve if we're not present with what's going on within us. We're just in imagination, if that's it's probably even the wrong way to pronounce it. Anyway, long enough video. Thanks for listening. I'll put a couple of links below for my um, Instagram account, which I'm enjoying being on Instagram. I've previously hated any of that kind of stuff. And my newsletter. So yeah, uh, enjoy your day. Talk to you. Thanks. Bye.